people who eat here are passionate about what they are eating. People who cook here are passionate about what they are cooking. People who serve here are passionate about serving. Therefore, we are the best. So it's time for the presentations. Priyanka, your time starts now. I would like to uh, start my today's task by suggesting cities that Indigo can get into. First one would be Goa because it's the most preferred holiday destination. Second being Bangalore because it's the IT hub of India. Delhi, capital of India. Keeping the concept of Indigo Delhi same throughout, you can have few suggestions at each city. Also, you can tie up with a lot of festival organizers. In Bangalore, you can tie up with the corporate brands for their launches. Also, you can have a 15-minute quick menu for these people, IT people who are always on the move. In Delhi, you can have celebrity chefs because people in Delhi are Bollywood crazy. I would suggest that Indigo sticks to their speciality restaurant, but it can just add few personalized services, such as uh, to their Delhi specials, they can actually add recipes given by their regular customers. You can also include recipes and delicacies which are from these family-run restaurants in small towns abroad. Diversification plans, you can tie up with cinemas to actually offer people what they like during the break. You can also tie up with high-class fitness centers and dietitians. A lot of retail brands are coming in India, international ones. So basically you can offer maybe wine testing and cheese. Moving on to the 10 years expansion plan, I would suggest that Indigo can totally go green where it can actually uh, harvest food products, uh, it can use solar energy for cooking and uh, actually promote healthy and fresh food. You can also have a health conscious theme where you have all the menu with calories for health conscious people. For Three example, up, a wheatgrass juice which uh, has Three minutes up. 150 calories and India is a land of many festivals. So for the people who are actually missing out on many festivals uh, out abroad, you can come up with an Indian speciality restaurant promoting those festivals. That's about it. Time for the twist. You have two minutes and your time starts now. For my innovative dish, um, I've named it as delicious fruit palad. We can have barbecued organic fruits served at Indigo Delhi. What I saw at Indigo Delhi that everything that is served out there is fresh. So you can actually have organic fresh fruits. The pricing can be nearly around 300 because since it's organic and people who enjoy the taste of organic fruits will pay that much. The marketing strategy is you can actually have a barbecue fruit festival where you can actually call uh, professionals, uh, barbecue experts from abroad and uh, introduce people to the top line grills and how they can cook about it. You can have promotion at high-end hypermarkets and supermarkets. For example, you can imagine there is a, a rack full of fruits. Just below the rack, you can just have a barbecue placed out there just below those fruits and say, if you want to taste this, just go to Indigo Delhi. So this is, if you can imagine that. And you can also tie up with uh, organizations such as IKT, which help people grow organic fruit. Thank Super. you so much. Rahul, question time. At the time you spent at the Indigo Delhi today, mm -hmm. um, what did you take away from it? What I found out at Indigo Delhi is uh, whether it's cheese or whether it's meat, you know, it's uh, brought from abroad and it's served to people and it exactly cooked the way it's cooked abroad. When you have a particular style of operation and a, uh, and a brand that you have uh, that is synonymous with this style of operation, if you keep doing things to change that around okay. constantly, are you actually interfering with, with what it is that you're trying to be? I want Indigo to increase their customer base, how they can reach out to people more. And few of the ideas, they are just uh, enhancing the customer experience when they come to the restaurant, the food being the same. It's not necessary all the ideas have to be taken immediately. In a country like ours, when you go through the slack seasons, how do you actually augment what it is that you're doing because there can be times you, where you have no True. food to serve. I think even during different seasons, you know, a different kind of uh, uh, various of dishes, dishes can be tried out because India has that kind of vegetables and fruits to offer at various different seasons. Thank you. Uh, please come back. Aparna, your time starts now. To begin with the expansion plan, what I have looked at is the uh, potential in the cities, one from the uh, disposable income point of view and also the culture of the city where people are most likely to eat out. There are eight mega cities in India out of the 20 top cities. Just these eight cities contribute about 45% of urban expenditure. So it makes a lot of sense to be in these cities first. Therefore, I propose Delhi, NCR, Gurgaon region as your next uh, entry. 
Kolkata is a great place where uh, people love eating out. They might be slightly price conscious, but then when they get great food, they don't mind paying for it. From there, we could move on to slightly smaller cities after, say, about uh, four or five years. Moving to the pricing policy, I would recommend a differentiated pricing policy that takes into account the city's paying capacity and also the cost difference that you will have. You could have something like happy hours where uh, you have a lesser pricing uh, to increase traffic during that time which reduces the stress on your peak hours. Now I move on to integration and diversification. You have your own bread that's made in-house, your ice creams are made in-house. makes a lot of sense to go back and also source some of it directly. So you could link up with local farmers markets, you could also procure certified fair trade uh, uh, ingredients such as coffee, teas, some of the veggies could be organic. Coming to diversification, I think a natural diversification could be lounges. You already have great food, uh, why not offer a great experience where people can relax and it goes very well with the European kind of lifestyle where people love to relax and unwind. Now how do we make it really special for the customer? The brand expectation that I think Indigo is looking at delivering is great food plus great experience. What I've done here is I've taken feedback from the chef and I've also combined it with uh, some of the reviews that I got on the internet about what consumers are saying when they visit Indigo. And what I realized was nobody's complaining about the food or the pricing, but people did have some issues about the waiting time and about, uh, you know, a little bit on service. So I think where we can definitely improve is reducing waiting time. Uh, you can have the option of re reserving your table. In fact, even making payment for your menu right on your website. Uh, people can order while waiting. Uh, people can, you can also deliver a waiting lounge for people to make it more convenient for them to wait. And to add to the experience, add a little bit of visuals where you talk, where you show the culture of the places from where your food is coming. Uh, also another thing that could be done is a day in the indigo kitchen where people can spend some time interacting with the chef, learning your special dishes, understanding the food and uh, connecting with the indigo brand even further. Thank you. It's time for your twist and your time starts now. My twist, uh, the dish is called the Explorer and this comes more from uh, my personal experience. So what this dish is about is it's like a platter which has a pre-decided selection of wines, starters, main course and a dessert. The reason for suggesting this is because um, although I love Italian food, I really don't know what the wine is and when I want to have what wine and what bread it goes with. But I would love it if somebody could tell me and I could really learn about the Italian food and uh, you know I get the best experience out of that food. I would price this um, uh, somewhere around 1200 to 1500 per person because this is an extremely exclusive experience. Your two minutes are over. <laughs> okay. Rahul? You raised a point in your presentation, have a standardized menu everywhere to allow for a little bit of diversity. How do you maintain your underlying um, style and your underlying identity of what it is and your presentation and all that? Um, when you allow for uh, when you allow for such change, I think when people associate with a brand, they form a visual image of what they're looking for. So uh, to have that consistency, probably the interiors could be done up in similar ways. Uh, even if you have a couple of dishes or three four dishes which are different, but uh, they go with that cuisine. So they are definitely European. Uh, the only thing is that if you know in a particular place in Kolkata people like more of fish so you have more of fish oriented dishes so it would just be tweaking it to meet what the customer likes how do I be in each restaurant every day or in each city every day to keep tabs on everything else it would greatly depend on the team that you're recruiting per restaurant right in your special dish the Explorer do you think it's really feasible to sort of present this entire thing uh, during the short period a person has to dine? I think this concept would go more with the uh, fine dining indigo rather than the deli because their people would have the time and they would, uh, you know, if they're spending so much they would really value inputs on the kind of cuisine that they're experiencing and that is more about experiencing than just eating the food. So I guess it would go well there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. your time starts now. So I'm going to take the whole thing on a Vedic perspective. The first thing when you want to expand is to know your customer. So people call them by first names, people call, give feedback, all that's great. But uh, you need a more strategic and a systematic and a technology-based way to 
when you scale bigger. I want you to profile the customers. So there are four kinds of people who come to me, says Krishna. First thing is the hungry guy who wants to eat something, so where do I eat? So Indigo should come to him. So create a brand where he could connect and come over. The second guy is a curious guy. How will it be to do a fine dining? So give him some incentives to come over and dine and make him a good customer. The third thing is just pure transactional stuff. Do a corporate tie-ups and then the fans. So you create an awesome loyalty program for them and make them your own salespeople. Expansion plans, I think people think I copied, but the one thing different is... <laughs> your uh, presentation is ready, we know you did. <laughs> so Pune, uh, because it's closer to Mumbai, you can easily expand your logistic stuff. So whenever you expand, right, there is something that uh, we need to make people like Indigo. So Veda say, Atmanastu Kamaya Sarvam Puriyam Bhavati. So what it means is, if you want to like something, you should feel that a part of it is in that. So whenever you go, when you expand itself, I'd subscribe to what uh, Aparna said, that uh, design menu to include local flavors, veggies, fruits, and chefs, and uh, design even promos. Say, for example, in Bangalore, if you say, say Namma International Restaurant, for people to connect with it. So notes for future expansion. So in two years, uh, have a presence in all metros. Obviously, you need a CRM when you go there. So test it out in all metros and then expand. Then four years, more restaurants within more cities. So identify key cities and expand within. And 10 years, by that time, you should go international. And, Three minutes, uh, you know. And uh, the franchisee should be based on passion quotient and not uh, how good they execute stuff. So pricing, uh, retain the same fine dining pricing model that the genre is, okay? But uh, same pricing is dangerous due to real estate and procurement costs. So uh, you, you can uh, multiply the weight by some of these factors. Please stick to fine dining. If absolutely you need to expand beyond, uh, please create a separate brand. Expansion and integration. So tie up with premium travel and tour operators. When people come there, uh, include Indigo as part of their trip so that when they go back, not only do you uh, reach international people, but also you create a brand internationally. So restaurant at airports, they're the right people. So uh, supply food to business class travelers so that when they take the taxi, they come to your restaurant and not to go home straight. Internationalization. This I would say, Yoga Kshemam Vahamiham. Krishna said, I'll bring unto you what you don't have and protect what you have. So when you go international, take Indian food to them, uh, package it in a great way. So you bring unto them what they don't have. Quickly summarize, uh, good food cannot be made in microwave time, but payment can be. So use technology to instantly pay, like tap. Employees are your real wealth. So passion that they share is amazing. They deserve to share the wealth also. And same Atmanas to Kamaya. Once you have a, take a ownership of that part, you like that even more. And uh, build a tech background for your people CRM. I would call your CRM as a people CRM, which is people based. Uh, slightly expand it so that a guy from Mumbai goes to Delhi, you say, okay, probably you don't like onions in your pizza or something like that. For good karma, donate leftovers to the poor and needy. Okay, ready for the twist? Yeah. Your two minutes start now. This is something that I've tried. It's come out very well. So uh, it goes well with your Italian theme. I call it garlic olive spaghetti. Make a spaghetti which is mildly cooked and include olive oil, dried red chilli and uh, some garlic cloves, dress it with oregano pepper and a hint of basil. Why? Because it's really quick to prepare and uh, ideal lunch for executives, people come eat and go. And it's not too heavy, not too light. If you can price it at 99, make some combos, interesting combos. All right. Did you consider the Indigo Delicatessen a fine dining uh, experience? For me, I thought it was a great dining place. Okay. I like what you said about if you go national or international to, um, to look at a franchise model where you base it on passion rather than systems. How do you franchise passion? You cannot franchise passion. You have to take people who are passionate. That's what I meant. The only thing that consistently drove across everybody I spoke in your place was passion. Yeah. Yeah. This, I want to make sure. you so nice. Like that passion comes through, they light up. Yeah. So that's why. Our company is called uh, Degustibus and it comes from a Latin phrase, Degustibus non disputandum, which means you can't dispute taste. Exactly. What I like, you don't like, what you like, I don't like, but there's no right or wrong. Do you think that there is a, like a standard demographic underlying trait that, that you can use to hold on to your customers? Basically, everything uh, comes back to what people like in that place. And uh, second thing is, uh, without losing your brand identity, uh, you should depend on passionate uh, franchisees or passionate people who, so that there's a right balance between um, customization without losing the original flavor. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And so the presentations are done. It's only a matter of time now before we find out who gets pitched out and who the final two contestants remaining on the pitch will be. All of that after the break. Rahul, tell us who is going to be pitched out. For somebody who's in a business that is all about people, I think that the other two had a little better handle on it. 
And now for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 contest. What is the milliamp hour of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 battery? A. 7200 milliamp hour. B. 7000 milliamp hour. C. 6100 milliamp hour. To send in your answers, type pitch space question number space ABC at 5995 or email us at the pitch at BloombergUTV.com. One lucky winner who can answer the maximum number of correct answers gets to win a Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 at the end of the series.